Yeah, so for anybody that doesn't know uh, Mel from Camp Hoo-Ha, um, she created it. She's helped True North a lot with our brand. She was really, really like led that whole strategic kind of direction we went with with True North. And we've been working together for what, four or five years? Yeah, it's been a long time. So I'm a client of yours, you're a client of mine. And it's, uh, it's been nice to sort of kind of build our brands uh, together, obviously different brands um, at the same time, but uh, we really collaborated well together and yeah, enjoyed some fun times and had some beers as well. So it's been a good team. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Nice. Yeah, so why, why don't you tell us? No, I, yeah. And thanks for everybody for joining. Thanks for coming on this mail. Should be, should be a fun little conversation. Do you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about Camp Hoo-Ha and kind of how I you got started? To. And Yeah. So Camp Hoo-Ha is basically, it's uh, kind of like a skill building club that we, our kids would normally go to, you know, they go, they learn something, they make friends, they collect a badge, but we do it with booze, badges and booze <laughs> the concept. Um, and I started it, this is hilarious. I started it in the great recession of 2017, <laughs> which is kind of laughable now, but I was working in freelance. Um, my freelance work was drying up. My husband was working in oil and gas and that was a really vulnerable place to be. So it was kind of one of those things where I was like, well, I got to create something just to make some money. And I also was like, I just want to do something for fun. If I can make some money and do something that's creatively satisfying, then I'm going to go for it. And there was also a space missing. It seemed like all the women's events were just these awkward networking events where you just don't know how to interact with each other. And mm -hmm. you're either at an event where you're talking about work or a mom's group. And I was like, there's got to be a space where we can just get together and have some laughs and kind of let our hair down and be kind of, uh, you know, our usual, not, not be our formal selves like we sometimes are. So, um, so I worked really hard in 2017 in the summer on what the name was going to be. Mike Medis is my logo. Mike's done some work with you in the past. And when I floated the idea by him, the hoo-ha logo was in my inbox. <laughs> Hours later, I was like, okay, we're doing it. We've got the logo. We've got the name. And I just put it on my Facebook page in September 2017 without like a dime to my name, just basically saying I'm doing this thing, I'm having this event. And it just went kind of crazy from there. So it's now in 12 cities. I have licensees wow. set up in other cities that are um, typically running in-person events. They're all kind of just sitting by right now. But um, so yeah, it's just kind of grown, uh, you know, based on the, the need there was for this kind of thing. Yeah, you really like struck a chord. What do you think people were hungry for when you started out? Like, was it, it was like getting together. Having it was fun? a dark contrast to sort of influencer culture, right? Like everything on right. Instagram was like this, like millennial pink and the same language and all of this sort of uh, soft, you know, perfect image stuff. And I, that doesn't resonate with me. And I know my mm -hmm. friends and we're all kind of have a bit of a real, quality and a kind of a badass edge and it was also um the demo right there's were it's not the 20 year olds that are coming although there are some younger girls but it was sort of that middle-aged woman that's our typical camper that mm -hmm. kind of ignored in the in the in the marketing space so it was the realness it was the brand it was the tone of voice that we used where you know we kind of pushed the envelope a bit mm -hmm. and those who liked it liked it a lot <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. You got some raving fans over there. Yeah. You're you're mentioning some of your fans even like contributed money during this COVID. Like even yeah. though there was no events, they weren't buying anything, but they believed in Camp Hua, wanted it to keep going. Yeah, how do you e transfers? I was like, you, I just got an e transfer for you, and they're like, yeah, it's just I just want you to like be okay. And I was like, well, buy merch. You don't have to just send me money. <laughs> but there was this real, um, you know. Um, message that we want this to be there in six months, eight months, 10 months. So they really, mm -hmm. you know, went full fledged. Yeah, I just saw Jana. Uh, they just were like, we're here for you. We're gonna buy the merch. We're gonna come to the events. We're gonna buy the badges and send you some money. So that was it was a beautiful thing. And that was like, okay, I'm good. I, I know that these guys have my back. So I gotta just deliver for them still too. I can't just take their money and then sit at home. and watch Netflix so yeah yeah do you think there's like one event or one speaker that really kind of put Camp Hoo -Ha on the map or like really launched you guys you know what we've had just 
amazing speakers and my focus, you know, as much as I'm the leader of this thing is really dialing on, dialing in on orchestrating the people, right? Finding the right speakers who, again, aren't those big influencers with hundreds of thousands of followers. They're the mm -hmm. real women who are going to still deliver uh, the right content, but can, you know, can, will resonate with the audience too. I've always said badasses make good speakers, right? They too have to have that, yeah. that edge and be to relate to campers and make them laugh and teach them something. So, you know what, our first speakers that were empowerment, I've had them lead every new chapter yeah. um, for many reasons. And, um, and we also have this, mm -hmm like really great relationship where I'm super invested in their business and we travel together. We're always share ideas because we understand each other and again, share those values and, and want what's best for each other. So there's that sweet spot, but they've all been amazing. So I don't know if I can pick a favorite. Like we have many of them come back. Julie Van Rose got some that we just constantly have back. Uh, they're brilliant at what they do. Did I just freeze? Yeah. You did, but we can still hear you. So that's, that's all right. Um, <laughs> and so obviously like it, the bread and butter of what you guys do is events. So, yeah. Yeah. So what, like, what has changed since you guys, Next, have, get, since events aren't allowed question. anymore? And... Uh Oh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Oh, okay. good. Yeah, sorry, I'm still freezing up on you. I can still hear you, so you can... Right now. Um, <laughs> everything changed, I mean... Keep talking. March 12th, is obviously... Mm -hmm. ...thing. Um, are thinking this whole thing is over. Um, and then I quickly had to do that mind shift, uh, you know, change, which was, okay, I know what I don't, don't have. I know what I can't do. What can I do? Our concept is badge and, badges and booze. I got badges in the basement. There's lots of booze out there, as everybody has known. We just put together a plan of, of like, let's do Online events, as much as it's not my favorite space to work in, let's sell badges just for five bucks and let campers still earn those badges and let's build a national brand. We have the chance now to tap into women across, across the country. Like, let's, mm -hmm. let's build. Like, this is, that's the cra craziest thing I could do over the next, next three months is build, build a bigger brand. And it, it somehow worked. And I also really focused on on, you know, even though they're going to be online events, I'm so worried about losing that experience, right? When you're together, you're sharing spaces, you're eating together, you're laughing together. And I was worried about losing that. So I really, again, got dialed into what my campers needed. Emotionally need out of this, not just how can I make my money and what kind of badges can I do, but what is these guys need um and how do i make that my yeah my focus well yeah i can like there's so many people just like trapped at home that's always been my focus is is making sure that these guys are getting what they need so so flipping it from like poor me to like let's be a helper and let's 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 build some Something crazy in a time when, when you know it's really, really hard so that's what changed we went online yeah and I I can imagine when people are under house arrest for three months they get pretty antsy to have a drink with their friends see some other people even if it is digitally um, like I know South Africa when everybody went into COVID they closed liquor stores, cigarette sales were illegal. Like, you can't, can't buy smokes, you can't buy booze can't for all of the lockdown. You can't hear me at all? Hmm. Okay. Are you there? I am here, yep. 
Sorry, we're having a little bit of Wi-Fi issues here. Are you? <laughs> I wonder if we should start again. Are you okay. there? Are we on the same page now? Yep. No. Let's um throw up a picture. Let's see if we can catch this up. This is our swag bag. Let's see. Swag bag. Uh oh. Okay. Can you can you hear me now? Okay, let's start again. Um, so yeah, I'm sure people are just dying to get into these hoo ha events as soon yeah. as everything opens up. But digitally, you've had some success too. No, I can hear you now. Oh. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So. I I so think that whole cooped up. Yeah, I hope I don't know if it's. You want me to? Duck? Sure, let's try that. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, now we're good. Let's dial back in. Dial back in. I'll kick you off. And, okay. Okay, let's bring Mel back on here. Sorry, everyone. No. Well, in the meantime, I can talk to you about Cabin. They just won the Best Brewery in Alberta Award for 2020, which is announced back in April. And honestly, like one of the best beer, beers that I drink, and I drink them all the time. And they got such good design. I think that's daughter that does all the design. And this one's amazing. This is Australian hazy IPA, which is great. I've, this is my first time drinking this one, and it's delicious. Um, and Hayden, one of the one of the guys I used to listen to him on CBC Radio all the time. He was their like beer critic, so I was like very familiar listening to him once a week. And then when I heard he was starting his own brewery, they got like a star studded team over there. So it's no surprise really that they won and they've been super generous with, with us, gave us the beer. We got an awesome prize pack. We have a growler with a free fill with a pint glass, some stickers. There's like a, they're doing like a Father's Day um, gift, gift pack on their end, but they provided some of their stickers and yeah, so you can follow us on Instagram. We'll be giving that away, um, yeah, probably tomorrow, and I can drop it off. We also have some Camp Hoo-Ha swag in there and some True North golf balls. I just I moved to the room it. to see if that helps. I don't know if that was the problem, but um, yeah. Oh, now we're back on track. Yeah, because there was like a delay. You were talking, and then the voice would come after. But okay, so... Um, yeah, let's, I think we kind of, we broke up right around what, what's changed yeah. since COVID and like people being very eager to get back into like some social activity. And, um, so has there been some good reception, like on the digital? There's been a huge, in the, and now it's like, I've got women dialing in that are like, you know, on a farm in the middle of nowhere that would never get the in-person events. And now it's like, we're going to keep doing this, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's ways to still build this community and offer that. We could do the in-person events, kind of do a hybrid where we have maybe 50 people in a room and have a couple hundred online. Um, so I hate to like start, start this up and then, you know, tell those women, yeah, it was nice to have you for three months. We're going to sort of disconnect now and you know and lose them so uh and I was always sort of averse to doing the online thing because I thought you needed to be in the physical space to have the camp experience but you don't like you can this has proved to me and I'm not a tech person that connection can happen this way um and we've done things to just try to make it as you know uh feel as like it's an in-person thing we've got camp songs we have wine tasting notes um, so we, we try to break that zoom grid up a bit so that it feels dynamic, I guess. So 
yeah, so we're gonna keep doing some online stuff and um, and make it work. And yeah, there's, that... also, there's also a range of feelings about the comfort level getting back into it, right? So if we're allowed 50 in the room, that's great. But do I have 50 people that want to get in the room? I'm pretty sure I do. But putting out the feelers and making sure um, we're matching the comfort level of our community too. There's people that are not going to want to be at an event for a long time. So. Yeah. And I know your like your camp weekend out in mm -hmm. Kananaskis was going to be, was it this weekend? That's next. It was supposed next. to be next weekend, Father's Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we postponed that again campers were awesome a lot of them most of them have kept their um, their money with us so we can just move to next year I'm confident that we'll be able to deliver next year that's a huge bummer from a business perspective that's a big flagship event for me so um, keeping that one going and that's also the one where friendships are really built like you're spending 48 hours together sleeping in bunk beds you know, elbow to elbow at dinner time. So, so that was a huge bummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. I'm sure people are very disappointed, but can't wait till next year. You've built yeah. like a really good community there. And can you just talk a little bit about how you, how you built that community? And like, we're, we're trying to build a community of small business owners and self-employed people in Calgary that can share in their struggles or their ideas and have people kind of on the same page have that perspective of a business owner and but yeah can you just explain how you did it or what worked for you I guess so for me it was very much um like it was a physical uh plan strategy and then also a strategy in terms of the business right physically again those summer camps putting them on benches at events where they are sitting that's so close together that you can't help but like connect, right? You're physically touching each other, which won't be happening in the fall. So, um, and also setting it up. So there's a lot of girls that come to camp by themselves and they know everybody. So there's a comfort level in like, I don't have to go with a group of friends. I can show up by myself because it's, this community is going to welcome me. People are going to talk to me. Uh, so that was a huge part of it. And then from a, social media and sort of online perspective, we have Facebook groups, you know, our Instagram account, all of that stuff, where it's open to everybody to share, you know, camp related stuff, funny stories, whatever. I've always said that this is not my club. This is your club, right? I'm here to bring mm -hmm. you guys together. But you guys tell me what you want to do, how you want to do it when you want to do it. Um, so they've really kind of respected that and uh, that's been a huge part too I'm not the boss that's gonna tell them you know I'm gonna obviously make things happen but empowering them to 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 really help me navigate it has been has helped them connect as a group too so yeah mm -hmm. and so people just are they active in the Facebook group do they use those yeah. tools <laughs> yeah very active and it's just like I feel I, I laugh when people join the group because it's just it's a lot of vagina memes and <laughs> offside. Well, that's your brand. There's camp <laughs> stuff, but it's a place to just again. We're not. I'm not here to censor women. We have a side of us that we want to let out. So again, I'm sort of giving them permission and a place where they can uh, say and do things that they maybe never thought they could do. So yeah, yeah. It's what, <laughs> what's the uh... What's the craziest event you've done or the most uh, out there event you've done? Well, we just did a, a virtual pony race with Century Downs. That was sort of a replacement for we normally do a hockey draft, which got postponed, right, yeah. canceled, obviously. So the pony races was a fun one because it was like there's no live horse racing. So we used old footage and then Mandy Stobo created some like digital horses and we had a horse race of animated horses that included like a seahorse. <laughs> and it was so silly, but it was so fun. And it was again, one of those things where there's so much craziness going on in the world that I wanted to do some stuff that was weird and silly to take us away from that. Um, so that mm -hmm. one was super fun. And then we've done like, you know, naughty paint nights where we've had nude models uh that's no, the one i was thinking of yeah so we've done some out there stuff and uh now it's always hard to sort of top some of those things but the wheels are turning yeah i'm sure you have a lot of ideas a lot of good speakers lined up mm -hmm. um so 
what do you, is there anything else you think people are kind of hungry for right now in terms of like getting back out there and seeing people and connecting face to face? Like um, I'm thinking more like small business, fellow small business owners. Like, is there any communities out there that you know of where people can connect and maybe learn something? Well, there's lots of good resources. Like I love the social school. Um, yeah. Judy has come to summer camp. I, I've had coffee with her before. She's just, she's got a brilliant mind and she really um, can again, sort of tap into what people really need. And I think business owners, my advice is this is how I am naturally is like, get super scrappy with your business. Like right now I've just been like, you know, flying by the seat of my pants, but this is the point where put the books down, you know, you don't have to go by the rules and do all of this stuff. And that business plan line is not a straight A to B. It's messy, especially in times like this. So oh, yeah. and all the rules are kind of out the window, like, you know, go after clients or sponsors or whatever or ideas that a year ago would have seemed impossible because everything has changed and everything is fair game. So get scrappy, try things and, you know, really push yourself um and explore ideas that are crazy so that's my yeah <laughs> invitation yeah well <laughs> things like this they don't cost a penny mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's a good time to just try things and yeah. see what gets traction and yeah um, so and do you it's think interesting. it's interesting too because people again they're focused on you know what what they need to be making or producing or selling and now I think everybody has really, especially the last couple months, is like, do what you do stuff you love too, right? If you're going to start a business or adapt your business, now is the time to like, make it so it's something that is going to make you happy, especially if you have to do it from home all day and you're sitting by yourself. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, Kelly Duty's social school. Um, that's her company. It's awesome. I've been to quite a few of her events, especially yeah. around like blogging or newsletters and uh, using social media or like, oh, she's had a ton. She had a whole one on LinkedIn a while ago. And um, yeah, I think that's a great place for small business owners just to learn those basic skills. And yeah, um, yeah it's primarily around social media and content marketing, which um, I think anybody can develop that like if you start a business you're probably an expert in what you do and yeah. there's people out there that might be looking for what you have to say so it's yeah. a good time just to start that and yeah she's just teaching people how to do it I also think it's a good time to reach out to people who um, you admire and ask for their time now people should have some time to give back to people that are you know, just starting out. And if those mm. people can't carve off the time for you in the middle of a pandemic or a time when they're working yeah. from home. <laughs> so now I think it's the time to, yeah, to reach out and connect with people who would normally maybe not be as accessible. So. And yeah. how, how would you go finding those people or trying to like, I guess, reaching out on social or because you can't really like, knock on their door or I mean, call the yeah, office. Or but social. And I mean, I'll, I always kind of my I teach at AU Arts, so my students, you know, we do projects, and I'm like, you know, if you've got somebody you totally idolize, send them a nice email, tell them what you, you know, be specific about what you admire about them. Don't just be like, I need to pick, I want to pick your brain. Can I have 15 minutes of your time? You know, be specific about what you're looking for from them um, and what you want to learn from them, and I think you're, mm. you know, more likely to get a response. So. I think it's probably hit and miss with, um, you know, who's going to return them. But when people are have good hearts and want to give back, especially after the last couple of months, then hopefully they'll give you the time of day. So, again, it's one of those yeah. things where you go for it. What do you got to lose? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, let's talk about AU Arts for a, bit, for a little yeah. bit, which is ACAD. I guess. When did they change the name? Uh, they, I think they just changed it a year ago. So I've taught there yeah. for the last four years I took I think a year off so I'm back there uh, I was just there this past semester and then I'm teaching in the fall again so um, and I teach entrepreneurship and a, I'll be teaching a business class there too and I I love it I get to share camp case study in real time with these students right I'm putting 
everything on the projector and showing them what I'm going through. You know, you know, the first year I taught it was like startup and now it's going through scaling and, and making them understand um, the decision making, the strategy, the linking, right? How you link all of your decisions and every single one of those things has to be strategic and have, um, have motivation behind it. So mm -hmm. I love teaching uh, and we're going to be teaching online in the fall too, which again is like, mm -hmm. you know, it's the way things got to be. But yeah, it's a great way for me to walk the walk essentially. If I'm going to be teaching these guys stuff, I better have my act together too. So Mm -hmm. And yeah. do you ever talk to them? Like there's a lot of people, especially in their early 20s at that student age or late teens, and they're yep. thinking about building a business out of their passion. Like, oh, I want to make jewelry or I want to yep. make, I want to be an artist and start my own business. And you've, you've done that with hoo-ha, like you've taken something you're passionate about, something you love and you've created a successful business out of it, but it's not all fun and games. Like, do you have those types of conversations? Like, be willing to like, oh, work yeah. your balls all the, pants all, off? And the first thing I have them do is do a sort of, like, life inventory where they're digging into their values, right? Like, who are you at your core as a person? Like, what is your personal DNA and how does that align with this business? If you've got this mm -hmm. business idea and it, it, you aren't the type of person that could do it or that's not your passion then it's probably not a smart, you know, smart business. And some of these students, they're 25 and they already have three startups going on. <laughs> like some of them are just real hustlers and they're on their way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of ha ha getting them to, you know, really think through um, every step of that business, the why, who their customer is, you know, how to, you know, what it takes to basically, you know, come up with a positioning so that you have a place what, what what's your stake in the ground right otherwise nobody's gonna care so making them think through all those things instead of i'm gonna open a you know jewelry shop and on Stephen ave or whatever well you and how many other people have had that idea and you know setting them up so they yeah. think about all of the things that can make them fail so that they have a rationale behind every decision they're making um, and it's awesome to see the light go on when some of them get it, especially when I'm getting their final projects. And it's just like, some of them are just, they're so smart. The world is in good hands. <laughs> the yeah. future is good hands. Yeah, well, we know one graduate from ACAD that started a jewelry company and she's still going like 10 years later. She's super successful, sold in oh. stores all over, like from Japan. She's got a, she's in Vancouver now, but she started out at um, fashion, Central? What was that place on Stevens Ave? Like, yeah. Tiny yeah, yeah. little Art Central. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a lot of them, like, it's when you have that combination of being an idea person, there still has to be a core idea, right? A story mm -hmm. behind your brand. When you have that and you have a strategic mind, it's like, watch out, right? Like, those two things together, you can be as creative and as amazing at making jewelry as ever. But if you don't have a strategic business mind, too, then that's, you know, then there's a problem. Then you either need to hire somebody who can do that or develop those skills, right? So having those two, you know, some, and sometimes those are opposites, right? You're not, how is yeah. a creative person a good business person too? That's the sort of tricky part. So honing those skills, I've become really good at the strategic part of my business, the brand part, yeah. but like operational stuff and admin, I have to, I have to have somebody do that for me. That's not what, what I'm good at by any means. <laughs> Yeah, well, it goes with with any profession, really, like even accountants, you learn, you learn a skill, you go to school for it, you know, the tax law, you know how to do all the bookkeeping entries. But yeah. it doesn't make you a good business owner. It doesn't mean you're on top of the marketing and the HR and the IT infrastructure and yeah. um, just everything else that comes along with running a business. So it, it's yeah. really hard to business school is yeah it it's it you need some like tangible like yeah. skill building and it, again, some, it's somewhere that, to test that and learn about and it. it's, it's constantly changing that, too that scrappy um 
you know, resourcefulness that mm -hmm. you have to have, you know, sitting back and waiting things for things to happen or having the cash flow to pay a bunch of people to do stuff. A lot of my students too are like, you know, they're so specialized in there in what they do. And the world has changed so much though that, you know, the question is, are, should you be a jack of all trades or a master of one basically? And I've told mm -hmm. them, I'm like, you're a photographer, but you, if you can also do video or you're also really good at props or styling or whatever, it doesn't hurt to be, you know, a master of two because you're more hireable. Um, it eliminates other people that you have to hire. So, you know, sometimes just being not that you have to be a chameleon, but being really, really good at two things is, uh, is a great asset as well. I, I often think about this analogy as like, hmm. I have different roles yeah. in my life right now. And yeah. it's almost like I'm in university again. And like if my role as a father and a husband and a business owner and an accounting advisor, like I can't fail any of these, I, but yeah. I don't need to get an A plus in any of them either, really. So like a B student, I always think like, okay, I just got to get a B in all these different yeah. roles in my life. And that's something that, um, yeah, I think it's just kept me not dropping balls all over the place. Yeah. And, but that's like what a business owner has to do. They have to just, they have to take care of all these different parts, wear all these different hats and not really fail at any of them, but they yeah. don't have to, they don't have to kill it at any of them either. Maybe their core and business, they do. One interesting aspect of the last couple months, which um, was really frustrating. There was a few nights of just, you know, lots of tears and wanting to give up and just like, oh, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Was the tech stuff, right? Because we've got five people that we need to be on uh, an event all from home. And then we've got, you know, 500 people or 300 people on Facebook trying to join in and we had tech issues where we were trying to stream from zoom to Facebook and it was just it wouldn't it was buffering like same issue that we're just having just weird tech stuff that happens yeah well you know having I had an event where we lost 700 people because we couldn't fit everybody in a zoom call and I you know getting angry emails from people which I can totally understand being really hard at myself but it was like if I'm going to do this, I can't fail at that. Like I can't, I've got to figure this out or then I'm really dead in the water. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not a tech person. Again, it's like, I don't have the budget to be hiring somebody to do this, but I ended up finding somebody to help with it, carved off a budget for him. It took the weight of the world off my shoulders that I didn't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it was one of those things where it's like in this time where your business hinges on having an event online, you have to be able to have that event online. Yeah. You can tell that everything else, merch can be late, you know, you can miss emails, but when you got a thousand people waiting for an event and it doesn't show up, that's a fucking problem. <laughs> and and you can test that as much as you can, but until you have oh. seven hundred, a thousand people yeah. on there, you never know. Stuff's always gonna go that's wrong, right? And people mm -hmm. are super forgiving, um, for the most Hard and they know everybody's been going through this so it was kind of expected but hard at the time and again one of those things where it's like okay this is now an important piece of your business everything else yeah you want to get that right you want to make sure you've got your content but you need to be able to have something for those people to link to when it's go time mm -hmm. so in in six months or however long it takes to get through this second wave third wave yeah, maybe, maybe it's a year till things are like actually back to normal. What mm -hmm. do you think digital will still be a big component of your compute of your community and how people gonna, engage? Like, I think this is just changing everything. And again, it's like, even when the world is healthy, there are still people that want to connect online, regardless of, mm -hmm. you know, whether there's a, an event in their city um, or the world is again healthy or they have money or whatever like there is a there's a there's a need for that so I think it's going to be a big part of you know of the future of everything now we've proved to everybody that we can do it everybody can work from home you can deliver an event you can have a community all of that stuff so I don't think it's going to go away I'm kind of weirded out by like now they're exploring events where there's a virtual you know um 
you know, a virtual foyer where you can go and get a virtual drink. There's girls making like, ver like camp hoo ha sweatshirts for their like Animal Crossing avatars. <laughs> I was like, should I be making money off of this? <laughs> Do I need to start selling avatar merch? <laughs> so some of that stuff gets a little weird and crazy, but I think that is going to be a huge part of the future because now that we've lived through one or are living through one of these things who knows if there's another one around the corner right so well, people that just, be that just goes to prove that camp who has theirs it's not yours so they yeah. when they're creating their own like digital yeah, merch for their avatars that's that's pretty incredible and then there's me i was like <laughs> what's animal crossing like <laughs> i have no idea what that is <laughs> So that's that's amazing and they're all sharing uh, their merch with each other so that's been pretty yeah. interesting but yeah i think the online experience and again kind of a hybrid i'm uh taking off a month in july and gonna go hang out at my parents place and just kind of power down for a month and then it's kind of creating multiple scenarios right if we can mm -hmm. have 50 in a room what does that look like how do we do it do we have food how do we do this safely what if we all have to go back under quarantine again, right? How quickly can we get back to doing what we're doing now? Mm -hmm. And then my licensees too, like it's hard for them when they can only have 50 people in a room because it's, you know, they're doing events every two months. So how do we make yeah. that work for them? Um, and how do I support them and kind of adapt my model so that it can work for them for smaller groups. So there's lots to figure out, but my, I have an amazing business coach, Linda, Linda Maslechko, um, and she has always referred to some muscle and when I called her in March and said like, like you know crying saying I'm dead I'm dead in the water this is it like camp is done she's like nope this is when we built that mu that muscle right like mm -hmm. this is this is the time and so I feel like over the last couple months I've built up this metaphorical muscle that um, is gonna serve me right like I feel like I can mm -hmm. push through the next year or two years, um, you know, unless there's some other, unless the murder <laughs> one that's show up. <laughs> the murder was, <laughs> yeah. What's ahead of us, but so, yeah. So I think the future is good-ish. Again, everybody's really nervous about everything. So we'll proceed with caution, but optimism too. Yeah. Well, no, that's great. And I think we're probably out of time now. Um, so we'll, we'll wrap this up and just let everybody know that, um, yeah, we have a swag bag that's available. If you follow us on, on Instagram, there's a digital one and a, a prize pack. But really just thanks everybody who showed up and, and listened to this. And thank you so much, Mel, for, for the conversation and willing to be a part of this. And Cabin for donating all the, like, the promo code you get 10% off, off their beers and there's two growlers and the, I'll put this swag bag back or that's the prize pack. So it's our golf balls, a free growler fill, a Camp Uha mug with a beer patch. Can you tell us a little bit about the badge for beer? What does that yeah, mean? That badge we actually had made, we've done um, a beer sale three years in a row with Village Brewery. So we bottle our own beer with them and the, the badges are earned for whenever you buy or buy a beer or sell one. So fun little beer badge. It's nice to earn a badge for drinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got one. It's awesome. Yeah. It goes so great on the backpack. Exactly. And I guess we could give me a shout out for the awesome yeah. design. That's a me <laughs> original. Yeah. That's it. And same with True North Accounting, me original. Yeah. Great brand. Okay. Well, again, really appreciate it, Mel. And Thank you for hopefully, having yeah, hopefully people got something out of this. And I know it's always interesting to hear a story. And Mel's got a great one. And she's awesome to talk to. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, everybody who joined us. I see some campers in there. So I will talk to you guys soon. And uh, have a good, what day is it? I always want to say have a good weekend. And then people are like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's, fr it's Friday, Junior. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well. <laughs> Great weekend, and we'll catch up soon, Matt. You guys take care. Enjoy the weather out there. It's going to be nice. Awesome. Will do. Okay. Later. Okay, Matt. <laughs>